If you've looked into the rules around wild camping in England, you've probably seen words like obtain landowner permission or seek permission from the landowner. But how do you go about doing that? Well, I've recently got permission to camp on a nearby estate. And I'm gonna talk you through the steps that I followed to get it, which are basically find the land or the area that you'd like to camp, find the landowner details, get in touch with them, request permission, and then crack on and do it. It's not that easy, so I'm gonna go through all the details and share all of the links and templates I've made with you so that hopefully you can do the same. Before we jump into the detail, I do just need to say, I'm not covering the law or legality of wild camping in this video. So do look into it yourself, do your own research, and basically don't blame me if you get caught. And just to be clear for me, this isn't something that I do for every camp and every location that I go to. I just wanted to secure myself a couple of local spots that I could go to, to do product reviews um, and test kit out without that risk of being caught and getting moved on. So I will still be going on adventures further afield, up into the Peak District and the like, but I've now got specific spots where I can go and test out kit for you guys to tell you what it's like and give you decent reviews. And as with everything, there is probably easier ways of doing this. There's certainly different ways of doing it. The easiest is probably just to go around knocking on doors and talking to people and asking them. But I think you've got a better chance of success if you give the landowner time to think about what you're proposing and get back to you in their end time. But let us know in the comments what's worked for you and what methods you've used. And let's jump into the detail. So as I said, the first step is to find a location. So fire up your favorite mapping tool, whether it's Google Maps, OS Maps, Bing Maps, whatever you use, fire it up and have a good look around on the map to find a potential location that you'd like to go to. And for this video, I really wanted to use a worst case example. So I'm gonna use Bamford Edge because I know that you definitely won't get permission there. I know it's a place that'll be familiar to a lot of you. So I'm gonna use that and work through this example. But this step really is all about being selfish. It's about finding those spots just for you and keeping them to yourself and not sharing them. So once you've found a location, the next step is to find the details of the owner of that location. And there's a few ways of doing that. Sometimes you can just look around the map and if it's somewhere remote, there might be a nearby farmhouse or a single nearby business that you stand a pretty good chance of the owner being there. So if you found somewhere like that, it might be worth just reaching out directly and asking the question if they own the land and then lead on to asking for permission. But if you want to be 100% sure, or if there isn't anywhere nearby like that, you can use what's called an Inspire ID. An Inspire ID is just a, a number that the land registry use for every plot of land in the UK, and it ties the owner details to that plot of land. So to find that Inspire ID, you need to go to landregistry-uk.com. And again, I'll put all the links in the description below. They've got on their main page, a map with a sliding bar on it. On the left, you've got a satellite view and on the right, you've got the Inspire ID view, and it shows you all of the boundaries of the land with the Inspire ID number in the middle. So on here, you need to find the location that you just found on your favorite mapping service, plot it into this map, and then find the Inspire ID. And you'll see we found the number here for Bamford Edge. And take a note of that Inspire ID and visit the second website, the second land registry website. Again, I'll put the links below but you can put that Inspire ID into this website and it shows you all of the documents that are available about that land. And there is a charge for these, so to find the owner details, it's three pound. So it is a bit of a risk here. None of this is guaranteed, as I said, but if you really wanna find somewhere and get permission and you need those details, three pounds, not a, a crazy charge, really. So you put the number in, pop your card details in. Once the payment's gone through, you get access straight away to download the PDF. And in there, you've got the full details of who owns that piece of land. Now, in the case of Bamford Edge, you can see it's a company that looks after it and owns it. But if it is an individual that owns it, it will have their full name and contact details. Some of them have phone numbers in them. You might be able to find an email address as well if that individual owns a business. But that's the information that you use to get in touch with them. And the final step really is to make contact with that landowner and get permission. And I think it's important that you do this in the right way because you need to approach them properly and explain what you're all about, explain the principles of leave no trace and all that kind of stuff. So I've created a couple of templates that I've made available for you to download if you want to. These are for the letters that I used to get my permission. There's one template with a placeholder to put a map image in there. If you want to show the specific bit of land that you're talking about, 
and there's a separate template without the map image but with a placeholder for you just to describe the location if you could name the roads or give a grid reference or something like that instead so just download whichever template you want make sure you fill it with your own information and the information of the landowner and then you can either print it out sign it and post it to them or attach it to an email or copy and paste the same text into an email and send it to them if you've got their email address and then you just sit and wait and hope and remember don't get disheartened by this it's quite a difficult thing to get permission so just to give you an idea i wrote probably easily 10 to 15 letters i did get responses from five or six of those people just saying no basically the rest ignored me and then one of them got back to me so about 15 letters to secure one permission on one place so yeah don't get disheartened keep at it and you will find the right person so i hope you found that useful as i said i'll put links to all the websites and templates that i've used in the description below do let me know if you give it a go and let me know how you get on and i'll catch you in the next one